Well, good morning, Corfec Nation. Uh, we are slowly letting people filter in here, but in the essence of keeping everyone's day on time, I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Jennifer Norbit. I am the Chief Marketing and Communications Director at Corfac Headquarters in Chicago. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Nick Lucessen. Nick has presented to Corfac a couple of different times in the past. He attended our spring conference in 2022 in Las Vegas and spoke in person. He also uh, presented a Zoom session for us on uh, LinkedIn uh, sales tactics. Uh, gosh, it's been two or three years ago, but um, it's always a pleasure to have Nick uh, join us. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it straight over to him to get started. Thanks for being here, Nick. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, really appreciate everybody <clears throat> taking time out of their busy day to uh, learn how to create a effective direct marketing campaign. Um, we're going to kind of go um, kind of a step-by-step -step guide today. So um, as we kind of move forward, I would like everybody just to interrupt as they have questions. Uh, it's very hard uh, to kind of go back uh, and answer questions afterwards. So you can either just put them in the chat and Jennifer or Diana can let me know, or you can just interrupt uh, kind of as we move forward. So when we think about direct marketing, to me, it's really all about just being organized. Um, to me, that's the most difficult part uh, of direct marketing. We can't remember who we call, when we call, uh, and any of the follow-up. So I'm going to kind of walk you through my system and what I teach, uh, the CRM that I use, the data systems that I use, uh, the messaging that I use, and then the reporting and then how to follow up. Um, you guys can use any systems that you like. Uh, this will just kind of be, uh, I think, an easy, easy way to do it. So let me move forward. So I'm a big fan of HubSpot. Um, it's free. The free version is just as good um, as the paid versions. Uh, you can create your own free accounts. Um, they're not super hard to, to do. Um, everything that you kind of think about um, from a CRM about being complicated, uh, HubSpot really isn't. Um, there's a couple things that I think are important for me to show you. So that was how easy it was to get a free account. Just put in your email address, put in your company, um, and you're kind of ready to go. Um, it wasn't hard. I didn't put any credit card information in, nothing, right? And I have a free CRM that I can kind of move forward with. Um, so once the CRM is in place, uh, we can connect our emails to HubSpot. So if you have Outlook or you have Gmail, um, I never turn on automation. You can, there's reasons for it. Uh, just kind of maybe sometimes dirties up your inbox. And it really is that simple. The email is now connected and we'll have to log in on the Gmail side. Uh, and we can download the extension and it has for Gmail and for Office. I already have it kind of set up, so it's there. Um, and then you can be able to log in. We're going to come, come back to this um, in a little bit. All right. So once you have a CRM in place, you have... You know, as you saw, that took less than a minute, right? Obviously, I kind of went through it really fast, um, but it still isn't that that hard to be able to do. We're going to run into the next step, which is Zoom Info data. So you have a CRM, and then you need data to run direct marketing campaigns, or it just doesn't work. You can pull these from CoStar, different things that you have going on. You can pull these from different associations you're a part of. 
Uh, these could be alumni people you're trying to reach out to. Uh, but we really do have to like understand our audience. Uh, that's really, really important. And it's something that's something we sometimes overcomplicate in a lot of ways. So Zoom info can be a little expensive, um, depending on if you're getting it through your company or buying it yourself. Um, but we'll go to the advanced search function here. Uh, I kind of put together this already. Um, I thought uh, David Boyd was going to be on, so I built this for him. <laughs> but um, this is kind of just generic for him. Um, so you have C level from a roles perspective. I only want contacts that have mobile numbers with an 85% or more accuracy score. I don't really like data without mobile numbers. I think they're kind of useless. So I always want to make sure that that's in there. Uh, I can look at it from a manufacturing perspective. I can look at it from an employee count, maybe 50 to 250 employees. And I can look at it from a location perspective. So from this data set, I'm able to get 1,207 people that I can call on a phone and I'm able to have a conversation with potentially uh, through email marketing. They give you the LinkedIn URLs uh, or calling. And it just, you know, we need these kind of key components uh, to be successful. So if we don't have Zoom info, there's other databases that are out there, um, different Excel spreadsheets that you could put together, uh, rent rolls that you get from different you know, landlords that you're friends with that you can kind of create um, list inside Zoom info as well. So um, being able to have the CRM set up is super important. Um, and then we can kind of go from there. So you would then just export it out and it would be turned in to an Excel spreadsheet um, that you would then clean up. So we'll kind of take a quick look uh, at that. So this is how the Zoom info list shows up, middle names, different things. You can kind of delete out uh, departments. There's a lot of data that is just unnecessary. Um, so you don't have to import all the data. You can clean it just, you know, kind of for what, what we need. Uh, last name, first name, um, job title, direct, and make it real simple. So what we're gonna do next, Let's go back into HubSpot. So we have our CRM, we have contacts, um, and we can hit the import button. And we can go to start and import. Import file from computer. I always click companies and contacts, but you also have different options with meetings, notes, and different things that we can do from an activities perspective. None of these are deals uh, from that perspective. We're gonna do a single file. And we're going to add this list. So everything's a property that we just need to set up. So you got last name, first name, job title. Uh, this would be the phone number of the contact. So you just type in phone. You then have the email address, which is a key. So it allows for no duplicates when we have the keys. Um, so anytime you put an email in, we'll create another contact. Supplemental emails. Um, this is kind of interesting. Um, this is used for like advertising in a weird way. So if you're looking to find like a CEO on like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, they don't typically use their business kind of at, uh, emails uh, to join these platforms. Uh, they'll use their personal, so supplemental or personal email addresses uh, that you can use to advertise directly to them on the social media platforms. You can also email them if you want. Uh, but it's something we just create a new property. Contact information, single line text, we'll just pull it in. And then you have this LinkedIn URL. So we'll add that as well. We'll create a new property for that. And we have the mobile number, right? Um, we have the cities, the streets, um, Everything's just super simple. You're just typing it in, street address. And this is all through the contact. So when you do Zoom info, it will literally pull the where the person is located, not the headquarters. And then later on, we'll have the where the headquarters is uh, as well as something that we can pull in. You have your zip code. 
they call it a postal code. And then this is where it gets kind of tricky. So websites, uh, when you have a contact property, you have to change that to a company property and you have to make this a domain. So company domains are keys. So what that does is that allows you not to duplicate companies and then also allows for contacts to filter under the companies. So the keys are important. Uh, kind of remember there's only two that are important, just companies um, and the email addresses, uh, company websites and email addresses. Um, you'll then just put this one under phone for your company. Uh, we also have our employee headcount. So, um, you know, if you're looking to build a database of understanding the number of employees at each company, um, again, this is now companies that we're in. So it's company street. So if you want to do direct marketing through mail, uh, you can do it that way because you have all the, the addresses. And I hope you guys see that nothing that I'm doing here is really complicated. Uh, you're just matching words, essentially, and just making sure that you understand uh, the basics of the keys, which is just two. Um, and then also you have a number of locations, which we can create um, as a property. And you can create as many properties as you want. We're just using the free version, so we only get 10, um, but everything has a check mark. Let me get rid of that. Where are we at? And everything looks good. And we just import this in. So you can make the import name anything you like. And we can always find it through advanced filters, uh, this list. And then all the data has come in to this system. So if we don't have a CRM, and we don't have data, there is zero, zero things we could possibly do for direct marketing. Um, mainly, you're not going to be able to call all the people that are inside contacts and remember the last time you called Jake. You want to know if Jake opened your email or not. Um, it just, there's zero chance. So we really do need a database and we do really need a CRM. And, you know, this is a free version which works just as great as well. So now we have a CRM in place and we've been on this call for less than 15 minutes, right? Uh, we have data that's been imported and cleaned, right? Uh, into a system. Um, and then we're gonna move forward and create some templates. Uh, so Nick, before you jump ahead to that, uh, there was a question about cost for a 1200 person list. I'm not sure if that's referring to Zoom Info or uh, I know. Yeah, so I pay, here. I'm a Zoom Info partner. I pay 16 grand a year and I can sell up to 100,000 contacts to people. Um, so if you wanted to buy some data from me or if anybody on the call wants to buy data from me, there they can reach out, you know, through email, phone call, whatever, uh, ask you for my information and I can sell them any databases that that they want without them paying the 16,000. So depending on how many contacts they need. So creating templates are super important uh, when running a direct marketing campaign. Um, I never want anybody writing the same thing over and over again. Uh, there's no reason for it ever. Um, we, we can just easily move things forward. So, um, to me, the subject line is the most important line. And I feel like there's a couple types of campaigns that we can run. Uh, one is that there's similar current or past clients. Um, the case studies make sense. You have the testimonials. Um, same education. You're using that bonding and rapport to set meetings. Uh, you're part of the same association or you're inviting them to an event. Right. So there are a couple things for me that are like kind of basic ones that you can run. Um, so for me, I'm a big fan of finding who the clients are that are manufacturing, that are in Houston or whatever, that are similar. 
And that's what I use for my cold calling. And that's what I use for email marketing, LinkedIn messaging. When I was most successful in my career, I worked for a company called Watchdog, uh, which was a project management firm. And all I did was cold call. I wasn't allowed to do anything else. And I had an 85% close percentage, bringing them into a new market of healthcare and education. And all I ever did was just sell the resumes of the people that we were reaching out to. So if I was reaching out to Penn State Health, I didn't sell like our experience, but I sold Joe's experience working at the University of Pennsylvania and all his experience. So you can even use, you know, past experience. Um, but it, the best ones is once we started winning, I was able to use University of Delaware, Christiana Care, Penn State Health, and get more work from the wins that we were getting because they were current clients. And to me, if you reach out to a prospect and you name your three competitors and they don't respond back to you, it's something weird, right? Like they all want to know what you're doing for their competitors. They all want to know why they hired you, why, why you have a great case study, why you have a great testimonial and how you may be able to help them, right? They may be happy with their other broker, um, but they're also are always curious of what's, what's happening in the market in, in their market, in their industry, uh, and to me is a really, really important mindset to really think about. So I don't try to like hide it, right? So for me, I just go right at it. I just put right in the subject line, whoever my top three clients are, that makes sense to them. As like the first thing that people say. And you can just put, you know, current or clients, you know, void commercial, right? You're just like letting people know that these are my clients. These are people that I'm working with and you should be interested in it. Um, and then you can take, I kind of wrote some things out, but I like to just be very direct, um, but we have to go to personalize first down here. And we just have to type in the word first name because every time we send an email, it's going to be to a different person, right? So we never want to have to switch that. It will automatically pull it because we imported all the data with all the first names. It will pull that every time we send an email to somebody new. Um, and then again, I'm just reiterating what I said, right? So this could be the same message you say on the phone as you put in a LinkedIn message, as you put into an email campaign, you know, these are three, you know, Project DT, DCT Industrial and Kroll Holdings have trusted our company with their real estate needs. Just letting them know straight off the bat. This is somebody that's related to you. Uh, I was wondering if you were free and just ask what you're looking for, right? I always give three weeks that are on Fridays. Typically, I people think people don't work on Fridays. The best day to ever ask for a meeting is on Fridays. People are less busy. I always have most of my meetings on Fridays when I reach out to people and get new meetings. People are very, very open on their calendars and schedules. Uh, and it is a time when they have more downtime to learn about something new. Asking for a meeting on a Monday at 10 a.m. when they're just starting their week, you're never going to get that meeting. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 10 to 2 when they're busy, hard to get that meeting. Friday at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m., more likely, no matter what time of the year it is, summer, winter, fall, spring, uh, people are open to meeting you when they're free, not when they're busy. Um, and then I also like to be very specific on what my ask is, right? So are you free any of these three weeks? Because maybe they're busy on the 23rd, maybe they're busy on the week of the 30th, but maybe they're free on the 6th. And then exact times, 10 a.m. or 2 p.m., and then exactly what I'm asking for, which is a 30-minute Teams call, right? For them to learn why the companies above trusted our firm for the last 20 years or whatever it was, right? So if I would reach out to somebody, hold, they don't know me, right? And I'll give them a reason to trust me right away. They're less likely to engage me, right? And even if they were like, if you were like, hey, would you be interested in meeting? and you gave no dates and times, and they say yes, now you have to go back with dates. And it takes 10 emails to get that thing scheduled, right? 
when you give them dates and times, all they have to do is say, yes, September 6th works at 10 a.m. And you can send them a calendar invite right away, right? There's You're not confusing them. It's super simple. It's a yes or no. Um, so it's very important to, to do that. Now, this you can put in your website. You can learn a little bit more. You could add an attachment. Um, you could put in your resume um, to let them know who you are. Any of the additional stuff is fine, uh, but I'll show you another one that I had with a client that I think is uh, important for you guys to see. So let's go to this real quick. So templates, as I said, are super important. Right. So this is one of my favorite templates that I created for our client. Um, you can see we even put the directors of real estate's names inside the subject line. So we put the company, we put their name. Um, you know, they recently helped these medical device companies. Um, Ten, you know, company with smooth CR transactions. Sevens. This was a two hundred thousand sale lease back, and then this was the testimonial from that real estate facilities person, right? And then we let them know our additional experience right away. And then we did the ask. So it's really important to just tell your story and let people buy it or not buy it. And I don't feel there is literally any difference in what you do via email, LinkedIn, or calling on a phone, right? So if I was to get somebody on the phone, I would still drop the company names as the first thing I say, right? And I would, I would pretty much follow the email script as my cold calling script. It doesn't matter to me. It's, it's the exact same story. You tell it a thousand times. It's a numbers game. You got to be able to just make the calls and hopefully catch somebody um, when they're interested. It's not something that is like getting an introduction, which still is a numbers game. But we sometimes have to make 50 calls a day, 25 calls a day, 100 calls a day to be able to get there. It does take a lot of effort. It does take a lot of time. It's not a silver bullet. But if we have the right system, we have the right data, and we have the right message, right, we at least have a chance at success. But it really all starts with having the right systems in place and the right data, or most of it's kind of useless. The message to the wrong person doesn't work. And if we don't follow up, right, it's not effective as well. So when I was calling on Christiana Care, I called them and I tracked it in Salesforce. I called them 12 times, never spoke with Patrick Fugman ever on the phone, never got him on the phone, never spoke to him. I ever talked to the receptionist or just kind of got a voicemail, but I was always respectful then it over call, you know, I think if you give it a month gap, that's always appropriate, right? Um, but I would call and he'd say, you know, I would, she'd say he's not available right now. I'd send a follow-up email when I got a voice message. And on the 12th call, he finally let me in. It was a Friday, right? So helps with my story, but it was a Friday. Um, and I said to him on my last call, that was going to be at the University of Delaware. Do you mind if we come in? He said, yes, but I called him, just happened to catch him right? Or the the uh, the admin, his receptionist, I called her and she talked to him and they agreed, right? So we go in, he shows us some drawings and it was a good meeting. It was like 45 minutes, nothing crazy at like three o'clock on a Friday. I follow up 11 times, right? So I followed up 11 times, respectfully, sent him case studies, sent him testimonials. Uh, I let him know that I was going to be at Bay Health, which I did. I was going to be at Bay Health for a meeting and they let us come in. He took out drawings again, but this time he said, I want you to bid on it. And it was the first time that an incumbent kicked out somebody that was doing work there for 20 years, right? At Christian A Care. So um, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of follow up. And I just want to reiterate that because if it's not inside a CRM, you'll never remember. And all the effort is complete waste and it doesn't take one time. It doesn't take five times. It could take 23 times of respectfully following up in two meetings. It could take 10 meetings, but direct marketing to me should be at least 25% of your new business every year. 
you should get 75% from like introductions and repeat clients and things like that. We really do need a sophisticated method to be able to reach people that don't know we exist, but need to, and may be in the market. And we're just trying to catch them at the right time. So it's very, it's very hard, but we'll kind of go into a little bit more of how to run it in the technology aspect now, but does anybody have any questions regarding that part so far? No, all right. Bear with me while I set this up real quick. to edit this real quick. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change this just so it doesn't actually go to Jake. All right, so you can see that HubSpot is connected to my Gmail. Same thing happens with Outlook. You can see the name got changed, which changes the company, right? You can copy it in if you want. Um, and then I think I saved it, so it should work. Or I'll go back and double check it. Um, but you can see I have this direct marketing template, right? So all I'm doing is clicking it. And you can see that the first name was pulled. The subject line was pulled. The body of the email was pulled. And I never have to type it again. So a lot of people may be asking on this call, I don't want to send a hundred individualized emails every single day, right? Well, if you want to get past the spam filters, <laughs> you're going to have to, right? When you send a bulk email, right? So which, oh, wrong. Which HubSpot has the option for this type of emailing is meant for people that you already know, okay? Um, they've gotten super strict um, with spamming um, and you really wanna build these types of emails as follow-up campaigns that people are following and subscribing. I had uh, two friends over on uh, Sunday and we were just like, they didn't know each other, but they kind of knew each other, but they met like 10 years ago. And the guy's like, oh, I still get your emails and I still follow them, right? And it was like a way for them to connect because he still receives his emails that he chose to sign up for. You can get great data uh, with like the MailChimp and constant contact type data, but it's a lot harder to get through the spam filters and the other button on Outlook when you do it that way. So sending them individualized just gives you such a higher uh, rate and you can still see who opens and everything like that. So just something to um, keep in mind. And there's reasons to use that system, um, but we just gotta be careful, careful of it. So let me go back to where we're at. So this right here, you're going to have your email, it, you'll pull your template, um, you'll log it, right? So we'll go into that filter. I look at CRMs. Uh, as nothing but filing cabinets. That's all they are. There is nothing more that a CRM is than just a giant digital filing cabinet. And each of the contacts or companies or deals are just folders. And then in each folder are forms that you're filling out, right? And that's all it is. So it's gonna log this email and put that in a folder so you can digitally find it whenever you want. It's gonna track it so you can see when they open it right? And how many times they open it. That may make it easier to know to reach back out. Um, you'll put your signature in, do that. Um, you can <laughs> even have them write the emails for you. Um, 
it's an introduction email, it's a cold outreach, it's a follow-up email. You can tell them what you're selling, who you're selling to, uh, describe what you want to communicate, professional, helpful, witty, formal, op optimistic, whatever you want. So if you want them to write your email, that's cool too, um, which is another little kind of fun feature. Now, let's say we called them already and we left them a voice message. And I'm gonna show you on the phone how to do that and then how to get the reports for it all. But it's just something I have to like stop sharing here and go over there. But I do recommend you make the phone call first, then you send the email, but I just would have to jump back and forth from screens. So let's say we called, we didn't catch them, left them a quick voice message, and we sent this email right after. You also have task right here, right? So you can come in, customize your task, uh, I don't believe in, for whatever reason, writing the word, you know, email or call. I just like to do set meeting, okay? Because I don't care if I make a call. I don't care if I send an email. I don't care about anything other than I got the meeting and that I completed it, right? So I'm a big fan of just creating the task as set meeting with whoever, whatever that guy's name is. Just call it Jake. Um, and then you can put the date a month later and you can save it. So now that goes into your folder, right? In our digital folder under Jake's name is a task to complete that follow-up. Um, and then when you hit send, it's just going to go into that folder and we'll see when it's opened and things like that. So it's super easy. It's not complicated. Um, and it, and it works really well. Now, we're going to go from back to the phone, though. I'm going to show you how to make the calls from there, and then we'll move forward. So just give me like another minute or two to kind of set that up. Looks like everybody can see my screen on my phone. Okay. All right. So HubSpot has an app on their phone, which is where I recommend you do all of your calling from because it prompts you to record your notes or it prompts you to be able to say that you completed a call or you left a voice message or the number was wrong. So inside contacts, you can see that all the contacts pull up and you can create for your teams, for yourself, a list call these 50 people today and we can create a list and then you'll just show up and you'll click and call, click and call. You can create these as task and you can click and call, click and call. So we're going to go into Jake. I'm going to edit it just because I don't want to call Jake. I was going to call uh, <laughs> David, but I guess I'm going to need somebody else's number. So Jennifer, you have to give me your number real quick in a second and I'll, I'll edit it out. Um, so we're going to go to about and then we're going to go to edit. And then we have contact information. And Jennifer, what's your what's your number real quick? Here we go. 773. 773. 203. 203. 5975. All right. So right from here, I can hit call. All right. And it will give me the numbers, the cell phone number and the company number, right? Don't answer the phone, Jennifer, by the way. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, I'm going to stop sharing for one second. All 
All right, so let me write back in, okay? In a second. And then just don't answer. Okay, it's ringing. <laughs> and then come back on the Zoom link. All right, just let me back in. Gotta let me back in. Oops, sorry, yeah, I don't see it's not coming up as a. Do you see it, Diane? There it goes. Somebody let me in. Recording is All right, you guys good? I'm oh, sorry about that. All right. All right. So then you can see when we made the call. I can I can actually describe that call. I can scroll down and write it was busy. We connected, left a live message, left a voice message, wrong number. And I can even create a follow up task right from there. You can add pictures from there, follow up whenever you want, follow up in a month, hit save. Uh, and the fact that we may have left a voice message and I hit save. And all of that's right through here. And then I have all my activity that is saved. Uh, you can also see that the email that I sent was there. Uh, you can see if it's open, not opened, um, and move it forward. And even from your phone, um, you can also kind of log meetings um, and you can create the meeting outcome that was completed. And these all build reports, okay? And that's the most important thing is that we get these reports at the end of the day of how many calls, how many emails, uh, and things like that. So I'm gonna jump back to the computer. Two, two, two. I'm going to need this one right here. And we're going to look for this one. Okay. So now we have a system, Salesforce, HubSpot. Again, this is free. You get 10 changes, uh, connects to Outlook, Gmail. And we went to Zoom Info. And we build a database. You can go to CoStar. You can go to anywhere. You import it, all the data in the system. You created a basic template with a subject line. You're personalized with the first name. You pulled in the body. You sent that templated email to 100 people. You made your phone calls. And you need a report, right? So you can come in here and you can see that 486 emails were sent and you can see exactly who you sent them to, right? So it can pull a list of all the data for you. You can export that, save that report. Um, you can see how many meetings that you got from that outreach. Um, you can look at it and you can see all the calls that were made uh, and you can kind of move them forward. So all of this allows you to know and keep accountable your teams or yourself, how many meetings occurred, how many emails were sent, how many calls uh, to keep track of all of your efforts. And it's all very simple and it's systematic and there's a process to it. And then you can, you can go back and you can go look into all of your tasks and you can say, you know, oh, I have all the people to call in September. And then you can make that call list and call everybody. All the people that I called in July, I now need to call in October. You have that call list if you want to do it quarterly. It doesn't matter, right? But without the system, without the data, and without the process, everything is very, very hard. Everything is very complicated because we're not computers and we don't remember anything just we just don't right so everything that we get here let me go back to the other email 
which one is supposed to be this one right here. Okay. So all these contacts, there is a little bit of customization that I, I do recommend. Um, the same thing doesn't have to be done though on the mobile phone. Um, you can make the same call um, on your regular phone or a desk phone, and you could just log that you made a call. Um, on that note, Nick, there was a question about the number, the caller number. Does it connect directly and display the caller's mobile phone or or um, how does that you're work? You're not calling from HubSpot. You're just calling from your iPhone. It's just displaying your actual cell phone number. Um, it just allows for tracking. Uh, it has no difference. You're not calling from any outside source. There's doesn't even show HubSpot even existed. It just allows you to log the call. So great question. Um, but through here, you can do the same thing, build the same reports, create the same follow-ups, put the same notes, um, and kind of move it forward. And the other cool thing about running a direct marketing campaign um, that you did with inside a CRM is when you did get a meeting and you logged your meeting and you show that it's completed, um, you can then track back the deal that you got, that you created to your direct marketing efforts, right? So got a deal, I won, I had the meeting six months ago, and you can pull these reports on how you got your meetings as well. And you can kind of tie it back to the effort that did occur. And you would have all your activities here. You can put all your notes in because we don't remember anything when we call a thousand people a month. It's impossible. You just can't, or a hundred people a month. So that's why the the system um, is is so so important. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple things um, next because I it was one of the things that Jennifer or Diane sent me is that some people had some questions about some um, kind of like flyers or attachments um, when we build our contacts. We won some deals. Let's say we had a hundred meetings and all of them people uh, subscribed to our email and they're following us each month, right? Um, maybe we have an event that we're trying to invite them to, right? So this was built inside of HubSpot. Um, this is an event where they're celebrating the launch of Lee's Tampa Bay. They're my client down there. Um, you know, nice pictures come out. Uh, the agenda, um, who's hosting it by, and people can just register right there. And all that data goes into HubSpot as a follow-up for all that direct marketing effort. You're just continuing your process once you get people engaged to get to the close, right? So it's not just make a call, forget about people. It's running a seamless process inside a system and kind of working it to you get an end result. Um, it doesn't really kind of work um, any other way. Um, I'm not gonna show that. One. So um, any other questions um, from anybody? I know we got about 15 minutes left. Um, I wanted to kind of leave this open for questions or we're going to more like very specifics on like three other things that I'd recommend. Everybody good? All right. So what we're going to do now is talk about other types of campaigns um, that I would run um, that I think are highly effective. So for the young brokers um, that are kind of in the room or even no matter how senior you are, uh, one of my favorite direct marketing campaigns is using your education to reach out to people. Okay, so we talked about it from a standpoint of using your similar companies um, and reaching out and having client testimonial and case studies. Um, but if I was going to call people that went to Penn State and I went into Zoom Info or I use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to build this, um, I would always reach out and I would never say, my name's Nick and I work for Corfax. I would never do that. People just hang up the phone. I would never say, I work for Seabury or Colliers or whoever right? People just hang up. But I would say, hi, John, I see we both went to Penn State. Do you have a minute, right? And I would run that as a campaign to all the mobile numbers, all right? 
I would then, after I leave that exact same message as a voicemail, when they don't answer, I would put that in the subject line, Penn State alumni, love to connect. And then I would put the body of the email, something similar, and I would use that. Even if somebody was making an introduction, that would be the subject line, Penn State alumni introduction, love for you guys to connect. Uh, and then what I, I'll show you guys real quick is, uh, let me just pull it up and watch you do it live. When you guys run your direct marketing campaigns, they don't have to stop with a phone call and an email. And that's a really like important point. Um, you're allowed also to be able to do it through LinkedIn and through direct mail, right? So we have the addresses. We made a call, left a voice message. It didn't work. We sent an email. They didn't respond, right? You can find them on LinkedIn, ask them to connect and put a message. So I can look for everybody who went to Penn State that lives in the Philadelphia market and has the title of director of real estate or supply chain or CEO or CEO or managing partners of law firms. I can run the whole gamut and I can just hit the connect button right here. And I would always add a note. And the first thing I write is Penn State alumni love to connect class of whatever. Um, and that allows them to connect back, maybe message them, phone call. So all that stuff is super, super important in my mind is to use the same message <clears throat> when you call, when you email, when you use LinkedIn, even if you send them a letter. Um, all of that stuff is you're just trying to play a numbers game to see where we can go. Um, so big fan of using your education. You can do the same thing with Zoom Info. You can look up where they went to schools, uh, build databases that way as well. Uh, the next one that I really like, um, just pull it up where we're at. So is the same association. So it's one of my favorite ways to run direct marketing campaigns. Um, let's say you're part of a chamber of commerce. Uh, let's say you're part of like Cornet and you're trying to get directors of real estate. When I was trying to get into the New York market, my first time ever going there, I called every single end user in Cornette and just said, hey, uh, I'm new to New York. I'm on the board of Cornette in Philly. Love to have a meeting. I got so many meetings. It was outrageous. When you belong to the same association, just use that message. Um, hey, see, we're both part of, you know, the Houston Chamber of Commerce, or if you're part of a tech group, uh, even if you're on boards and there's other board members or other people that are volunteering that you think you want to meet. You just got to create that bonding and rapport as you're messaging. Um, and that really helps. And there's a ton of meetings um, from the associations that you're a part of. And you don't want to reach out to everybody just to feel that you make sense. Uh, and the last is inviting to an event. Um, even that's not through the email marketing way. Uh, during the pandemic, I worked with a company uh, called Cornerstone. Um, and we would create virtual events. And it would be like CEO only events. And we would reach out, we built the databases and we would call them, we would email them, we would LinkedIn message them. And then we'd obviously, once we connected, ask them to connect on LinkedIn, subscribe and run the whole process. But we were getting between like 10 and 15 CEOs, CFOs, COOs, directors of real estate, managing partners of law firms to learn about certain things virtually because you're offering them something. Now, I feel like it did work better during the pandemic when people wanted to learn different things, but it may be a, you have a suite at the Astros game and you have three other CEOs that are your best friends that are that they may want to meet, right? So maybe you, you get permission from one client that's your big client and big friend and you reach out to all your prospects and you say to them, Hey, John, um, having an event, Astros game, my client, John Smith, head of real estate over here will be attending. Didn't know if you want to come and network with other CEOs, other directors of real estate. I'm having a steak dinner. So to me, there's these really like four kind of powerful ways 
that people are open to getting to know you. They want to know what are the similar clients you're doing work with, who has, you know, people that are the same education with you, leveraging associations and then creating something that they may want to come to, like a golf outing or an event or meeting other people, um, that kind of work. So um, that's kind of everything that I wanted to kind of go over with you guys today. Uh, we have nine minutes left for questions or we all can get going early for good behavior, but that's kind of up to you guys. So. So good behavior it is. <laughs> Great. Well, Nick, thank you for taking the time. If there's any uh, follow-up questions uh, for Nick, we will be circulating the recording and uh, Nick's contact information to CORFAC members uh, in, in the next few days. So uh, please feel free to reach out to Nick and, and we thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Great. Thank you. Yes, most, most helpful. Thank you. Thank you.